The Titan submarine, which vanished on a Sunday, June 18, is thought to be somewhere near the Titanic wreck, which is located 370 miles off the coast of Newfoundland, 3,800 meters beneath the surface of the ocean. According to the US Navy, it heard a sound similar to an implosion close to the area where the submersible lost contact, and a remotely operated vehicle found the Titan's nose cone for 87 meters from the Titanic's bow. In addition to Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush, British businessman Hamish Harding, French Titanic specialist Paul Henry Nargiolet, British Pakistani businessman Shahzada Dalwood, 48, and his son Sulman, 19, were all on board when the Titan, which was bolted from the outside, exploded. A major challenge in the search was the depth at which Titan is likely to have travelled. At a depth of more than 3,000 metres, visibility will be virtually zero without external artificial light sources, and water pressure will be enormous. It was estimated that when the submersible lost contact with the surface on Sunday, those inside had around 96 hours of reserve oxygen, which will run out at around 8 a.m. on Thursday, June 22, BSD. How far can submarines dive? Free divers at shallow depths run the risk of suffocating or having their lungs crushed by the pressure. This is something that submarines are designed to guard against. The Mariana Trench, the deepest region of the Pacific Ocean, is 11,000 meters deep. In comparison, submarines can typically dive to a depth of about 300 meters. The maximum diving depth of US Los Angeles class submarines is thought to be between 675 and 900 meters, but they have a test depth of about 450 meters. The maximum depths a submarine can reach in a peaceful environment are known as test depths. It's thought that some Russian submarines can dive as deep as 2,000 meters. Every 10 meters of depth adds one atmospheric pressure, therefore at 300 meters, submarines operate under 30 atmospheres of pressure. At this level, a diver outside of a submarine would start to experience symptoms such as reduced brain function. The largest issue that submarines encounter is the water pressures. Due to the need to preserve military secrets, it is likely impossible to know the real depths to which the best military-grade submarines can dive. The Titan submersible ship is built to descend to 3,800 meters, where the Titanic's wreckage lies at the bottom of the North Atlantic Ocean. The finest submarines can only travel to a depth of around half of this. Why do submersibles have a greater depth of dive than submarines? As was the case with the Titan submersible, a mothership is required to launch and recover a submersible due to its limited power. In contrast to military submarines, which must also accommodate the stress of battle, submersibles are built with a different purpose in mind. They are made to travel to extremely shallow depths. At a depth of 10,971 meters and a pressure of more than 1,000 bar, the Challenger Deep is the deepest known location of the ocean floor on Earth. It was discovered by Jacques Picard in the submersible Trieste. But how deep can you dive before being crushed? Let's find out. The crush limit of a diver should be determined after taking into account a few different parameters. Up to 60% of the human body is made up of water, leaving 40% of the body as tissue. Body tissue in closed air spaces and the water percentile itself are more susceptible to crushing than one another. Our air passages, including the lungs, sinuses, and middle ear, are the simplest to damage. How far can you go before getting crushed, then? Simply put, the weight of the water cannot crush a diver, even at the deepest depths. How come though? The density of human bone is 11,159 kilograms per square inch. In order to avoid bone crushing, we would need to dive down to a depth of around 35.5 kilometers. This depth is triple that of the deepest spot in our ocean. Similar to water, 40% of the body's composition consists of non-water, non-gaseous minerals and tissues such salts, proteins, fats and lipids that are almost hard to compress. In order to calculate how readily the air spaces of a diver could be crushed, 
let's examine the most fundamental physics that determines volume changes with pressure. The relationship between depth, pressure, volume, and density in water is linear, according to Boyle's law. For the purposes of this episode, we will assume that every 10 meters of water has one bar. The farther you go deeper, the pressure also increases every 10 meters. So if the Challenger Deep, the deepest point on Earth, is 10,971 meters, the pressure on that point is equivalent to over 1,000 bar. We are first focusing on the crushing of air gaps within our body because water is basically incompressible. Equalizing is crucial to the safety of free divers and scuba divers. They increase the gas pressure in their air spaces to the same level as the atmospheric pressure at the depth they are diving in in order to counteract the static water pressure. This avoids the pressure from causing their air gaps to collapse. How deep can you dive without getting crushed is the question. The various restrictions we encounter when diving to great depths will not be taken into consideration. These include, among others, gas toxicity, narcosis, and differential pressure saturation and off-gassing. To avoid becoming too cold while diving, it is frequently necessary to wear some type of exposure protection. Divers experience varying levels of crushing depending on the suit they are wearing. Since we dive without a pressure suit, only our own air spaces need to be equalized and the water touches our bodies all around. It won't be altered by a skin suit or wetsuit. It is only when the water inside the diver's body freezes that it will be crushed. To avoid being crushed, a diver must be able to equalize their air gaps with gas. A gas bubble that surrounds the diver underwater is captured by a pressure suit. Divers must make sure the water pressure outside their suit and the gas pressure inside are equivalent in order to prevent crushing. Dry suit divers are taught to fill their suits with gas as they dive in order to avoid the extremely painful suit squeeze side effect. If the suit's pressure lowers, the diver would be crushed by the suit's decreased gas volume. Before diving, professional divers should double check their non-return valve. A vacuum inside the suit would crush the diver if this valve failed in the event of a gas supply failure. High pressure would crush the diver to death at great depths. However, under lower pressure, the diver would still experience death by crushing as a result of his or her lungs collapsing. An atmospheric suit is a type of hard suit that can endure the weight of the water around it on its own. These suits' gas is at one bar, the same pressure as our atmosphere. The diver wearing one of these stiff suits won't be crushed by the water. The atmospheric diving suit was first conceived of in 1715 by John Lethbridge. These suits can currently go down to a depth of about 700 meters. In the event that a suit fails, diving beyond the limit operational depth of these suits runs the risk of crushing the diver. Can the human body handle a lot of water pressure? The human body contains 60% water, as was already mentioned. Likewise, bone crashes at a rate of around 11,159 kilograms per square inch, which is too high for diving on Earth. Along with water, the other minerals and salts in our bodies are essentially incompressible. Theoretically, a diver can prevent being crushed if they equalize their own air spaces or the air gaps of the suit they are wearing. In our atmosphere and gravitational field, there is no body of water deep enough to apply enough pressure to solidify water, compress salts, proteins, fats and lipids, or even to crush bone. People have always been fascinated with deep diving. This concern was exacerbated in the early days of pressure suit diving when non-return valves failed and crushed divers. The question of how deep one can dive before being crushed cannot be answered with certainty. A diver cannot be crushed by the depths that can be reached by free diving, scuba, or even commercial diving. And that ends two days episode. Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world, and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.